This is the Project Management Podcast. We bring project management topics to beginners and experts. Find us on the web at www.thepmpodcast.com or send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. Hello and welcome to episode number 52. I am Cornelius Fichtner. This is the Project Management Podcast for the 7th of October 2006. About one year ago, my boss came to me and asked me to take over a troubled project in our company. And from one moment to the next, I went from being a project manager in charge of organizational change projects in the company to being a project manager for software development projects. While I had been a PM working on website development before, dealing with software development in a controlled environment is a completely different beast. The dynamics on this new project were, and still are, completely different to what I had done before. Surprise! Now you're a software project manager is the title of the book written by Bas de Bar. Of course, we will not be discussing his book as such today, but we will be discussing what being a software project manager is like, and in particular, that there is a big difference between a software development methodology and a project management methodology that is used to manage software development projects. Today is also the day that we announce the winners of our book giveaway of the book Introduction to IT Project Management. We are starting a new book giveaway because Bas has given us two books to do that. We have a listener comment, we have a seminar announcement, and we have a few more helpful resources that were recommended by our listeners. Uh oh, this episode is definitely going to run longer than the 30, 40 minutes that I have been trying to stick to lately. Sorry. Today's episode is sponsored by BOT International, the provider of processes on demand. PMO processes, policies and dashboards can be quite a bother to set up, institutionalize and maintain. BOT's Processes on Demand solves this problem by providing customizable project management processes and templates, PMO policies and dashboards, and integration features to PPM and collaboration applications such as Microsoft Project Server and SharePoint. To learn more, please visit botinternational.com. I have three more announcements and some listener feedback for you before we get to the helpful resources and then right into the interview. So let's start out with the winners of our book giveaway. And the two winners of a copy each of Introduction to IT Project Management, written by Cynthia Snyder and Frank Parth, are from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Brian Bosher, and from Little Rock, Arkansas in the United States, Bob Goodhand. Now, congratulations to both of you. We've had entries from all over the world, and as always, I have printed them, thrown them in a bucket, and my wife has drawn the two lucky winners. So it's absolute l- pure luck of the draw that they just happen to be both from North America. Well, yes, and talking about North America, I am going to be in Seattle, Washington, for the North American Leadership Seminar of the PMI from the 18th to the 22nd of this month. If you are also going to be at that seminar, why don't you get in touch with me and we'll sit down and we'll do a quick interview so we can feature you here on the program. And of course, that means if I'm in uh, Seattle on the 21st, which is going to be a Saturday where I usually post my episodes, there will not be an episode posted that week. So there'll be a break of one week between the, what is it, the 14th and the 28th, I guess. All right, once again, my announcement that I am changing the feed URL. A podcast is brought to you via a file called an RSS or an XML file, 
and uh, that file has to move from my old server to my new server. Now, if you're using iTunes or if you're going through the website and you click to download or to play the podcasts right there on the website, you don't have to worry in either case. But if you're using some other podcatching software, then you're probably going to have to resubscribe to the Project Management Podcast come the 17th of October. That's when I'm going to make the change. If you have problems after the 17th of October, write to me and I'll help you with this. And we're going to end our announcements today with some listener feedback from Randy Tanko. Hey, Cornelius. Uh, Good evening, or uh, shall I say probably good afternoon there in California. Just finished the listening to your latest podcast by the way I'm Randy sorry Um, I can agree with Eric Smith with the difficulty that he had with communicating especially with the Indian people Uh, they're a bit different as far as speaking is concerned although English is is some sort of a second language to them uh, because of their native tongue It's, it's different it's a tongue twister if I may uh, here in Kuwait, we get to experience a lot of that. So, you know that the thing about the PM box saying you have to uh, paraphrase or rephrase to make sure you understood them correctly, which uh, Eric Smith did. That happens over here, and uh, not only in projects, but uh, in almost uh, every everyday life where you you know. Uh, exchange uh, words with them or you know you deal with them on a daily basis and uh, well what else on top of that you will have to talk to uh, other people from other parts of the world especially with the Arabs who also have different ways of speaking English so it's like they're not saying what they mean something like that okay I hope my uh, uh, two cents is uh, something to add on Eric Smith's uh, podcast. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Thank you very much, Randy. It's always highly appreciated when people leave us some feedback. And of course, if you're also listening to Controlling Chaos and the PMO podcast, then you may have noticed that Randy uh, managed to actually be featured on all three podcasts this week. He did an interview on the PMO podcast. He left some feedback for Controlling Chaos, and he also left some feedback for today's episode of the Project Management Podcast. And you will hear from him in just a second. When it comes to helpful resources, we are continuing with recommendations that you, the listeners, have sent in. And in this episode, we have two people who have sent in their recommendation. The first one is, yes, you guessed it, Randy Tanko. He writes to us, I would say that the number one in my list of helpful resources that I would recommend is Ganthead because it gives me some real-world tips and some free templates which are usable. Then the Projects at Work website is very similar to the content of Ganthead. And finally, I like PM Podcast because it added some personal touch to the articles by having a voice. Oh, there's one more. I like PM Hub because it provides a forum for exchange among PM practitioners. Pardon me for not choosing only one. Regards, Randy Tanko. So those were his four recommendations. And a a similar number was sent to us by Mark Perry. And Mark Perry is, of course, the host of the PMO podcast. And if you haven't checked them out yet, go to thepmopodcast.com or in iTunes, search for PMO podcast and subscribe to their show. They're actually putting out about two episodes, three episodes sometimes a week. He writes, Regarding picking a favorite PM website, it is a hard task to narrow it down just to just one. And of course, there is quite a difference between subject matter experts websites, vendor websites, 
government organization websites, online PM community websites, PM blogs, etc. They all have their value and different kinds of levels of appeal. Let me first say that there are two things that I really like in a PM website of any kind. One, syndicated content, and two, live chat. I like syndicated content because I subscribe to sites which content with content helpful to me both professionally and personally. I use Google as my primary syndication content aggregator and enjoy getting daily upside updates from a number of RSS feeds. And of course, by syndicated, um, Mark means if it's available through an RSS feed. He continues, here's what I don't like in a website. One, static and unchanging content. And two, a visitor registration required to access the content. Now, I don't mind being asked to register to sit for a product demonstration or to request pricing on a proposal, etc. But to view content, to get a vendor white paper or to hear a webcast or a podcast, uh, nah, I don't want to to and I almost will never register for this. So having said all of that, are you still reading? Are you still listening? And since I come from the vendor website site of the house, I would like to cast my vote for my favorite Gartner Group PPM Magic Quadrant vendor website. Amongst all other guys, Mercury, HP, NICU, CA, Rational, IBM, Microsoft Project Server, UMT, etc., 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 my vote goes to Primavera. Though all of these vendor websites are good, Primavera has very well-designed website content, product screenshots oriented to visitor roles such as executives or project manager, and they also have syndicated content in the form of their executive BizPod bot podcast series, which I subscribe to and enjoy. And they have white papers and third-party reports, such as the Forrester report, that you can view without having to fill out a registration form. They don't have a live chat, and that is a bit of a disappointment. But in terms of what I like in a vendor website, Primavera stands out little taller than the others. All right, and that was the recommendation for Mark Perry. He recommends the Primavera website. As always, if you are looking to find these recommendations, why don't you go to the helpful resources section at the pmpodcast.com where you will find a link to all of these in the listener recommendation category. If you would like to share your own favorite website, send an email to pmpodcast at gmail.com. Tell me the URL. Explain why you like it, maybe in a few words less than Mark did today, and where you're writing from, and I will pass on your recommendation here on the show. And now on with today's interview, the main section of the show, the interview with Bas de Bar. Bas is from Holland and he lives in the Netherlands. For more than 10 years, he has been working in software projects for the publishing industry, newspapers. And of course, he is the author of Surprise, Now You're a Software Project Manager. And the book, by the way, is going to be available at the end of September. And of course, I'm going to put up a link on the uh, website pmpodcast.com in the helpful resources section under the books category. And we're also going to do a book giveaway. So if you want to hear about the book giveaway, you listen to the interview. And at the end of the interview, I'm going to make the announcement to that. So now, without further ado, here is the interview with Bas de Bar. Project Management Podcasts Feature Interview Today with Boss Debar, author of Surprise, now you're a software project manager. Hello Boss and welcome to the program. Hello Cornelius, good day. Well Boss, uh, tell me what do you like about managing software development projects? Well, actually what I 
like the most is the, that you are creating new things and a lot of people are involved. And I understand that there are many, many more industries where you have this kind of thing. But it's the industry I happen to um, be in. And on a coincidence, uh, I rolled into it. So um, this is the industry I'm in. But I really like the, the, the creating of new new things and the emergent, uh, that it emerges when you have a lot of people involved. You wrote a book about managing software projects and uh, it's going to be released on the 30th of September. Why did you decide to write your book? There are already so many books on uh, managing software projects out there. Well, actually, I didn't start out writing it with the intention to publish it as a book. I started writing, I don't know, five years ago, some some pieces I had in mind. And after a couple of years, I had enough to create it into a book. So actually, the first intention was not to write a book. However, I started writing the, the, the stuff for the following reason. During my uh, study, I r read a lot of project management books. And they are very, they were very dry, very theoretic, and very technique and process oriented. And then I started working in the software industry, and actually found out that everything I needed to know was not in one of the books I've read. The thing what I missed the most is the um, the mention and the influence of people, of the stakeholders, of whatever, what, what people uh, that are involved with software projects, projects want and what they do. And so there it, I, miss, I miss the link between the reality and uh, uh, the techniques that you can use. Just to make it clear, we're of course not going to talk about your book in uh, today's interview. Uh, we have a book giveaway at the end, but uh, we're really mostly interested in talking about your experience and uh, what you have learned in all those years of managing these projects. But one thing we have to set clear uh, in the beginning is that there is a difference between a software development methodology and a project management methodology for software development projects. Why don't you give us an overview of the difference here? The, the most obvious difference is, of course, the emphasis. I mean, the software development methodology covers the software development as on its own. Um, so the creation and the programming of software. The project management methodology for software development projects takes on the management part, of course, it's all very obvious. However, it's the the emphasis that the different methodologies put onto the uh, process. Also, the the scope of the uh, the PM methods is a little bit wider. Um, it covers uh, the basics from requirement determination, but also the start of the project, so budgeting and that kind of stuff. And it goes a little towards the end. Also, it has some extra aspects like the to going to the cut over. So the um, project methods are, of course, about the project management part of it. And the uh, emphasis they have is a little bit different. In most software development methods, you will find some management kind of techniques, but they're very small, very little. On the other side, in some project management methods for software development, you will find some really software development techniques, parts, and components. But, the, of course, the emphasis, the scope of the uh, both methods, kind of methods, is different. Yes, and what we want to talk about today is, of course, the project management aspect of this whole thing. Uh, well, as it just happens, I have, that's the truth, I've recently been thrown into the role of a project manager for software development projects. Now, let's pretend that I know absolutely nothing about this kind of work. So, tell me, where do I start? Well, of course, you would start, at least for in my perspective, of course, you would start with stakeholders. It's actually the people that are involved around, sur around your project. So this can be your customer, this can be the programmer, this can be the user. Everything that has some, something to do with the project uh, is the stakeholder. What you need to know, what you need to get into is what those people want out of the project. 
I make a distinction, uh, a three-layer distinction. First of all, people have interests. So that is what they have in their minds, what they really, really want. They want to have a bigger office, or they want to have more power, or they want to have more recognition among their peers, that kind of stuff. That is, interests are not communicated most of the time. It's a thing that people have in their heads. But it's actually the, the, the item that drives them, that um, their behavior will be determined in the interests they have. The thing they communicate are their expectations. So, um, and that will be for me a level uh, two. So if you ask people what do you want from this project or what do you think uh, we should do, they give you some information, one-sided, their view, and it will be an expectation. After that, you negotiate with them about what you actually are going to do. And that will be the requirements. So you have the interests, you have the expectations, and then you have the requirements. Why is this important? This is very important to have a feeling for the interests that people have, because it will determine what they will do uh, on the project. It will determine on how they react, respond to everything that happens in and around the project. Of course, this is very generic. This, this, will, be, this will be something that will, uh, will be surrounded by every other kind of project you have. I don't know if you're constructing bridges or having a, a put, a, put a man on the moon, you will have this kind of stuff. But for software projects, because it, it, has, it is very specific, there is a kind of mindset that uh, you will find by, by a lot of people that are surrounded at the software projects. Give me an example. I mean, developers are, of course, there are so many types, types of people, but there are some generalizations you can, can do. Most of the time, they're very technical oriented. They love to uh, go into the details. They, or most of the time, they want to at least dive into their technical stuff. They're very, very biased to what their peers think. So, for example, uh, they, they, they care more about what other developers think from their work than, uh, like in the hierarchy, what their boss thinks. So, if you get a feeling of that kind of stuff, you will manage your project better in this respect. So, if you ask me what you should do first if you're new to software project management, get a feeling, get into the stuff from what people are in their heads, what they want from a project, and how they operate. Um, um, how they operate within this context. This will give you clues on how to set up the, um, the method components or the, the approach components, if you like that term more. For example, if, if a financial director is very, very nervous about how the budget is going, that will give you a clue that you have to create more feedback on the budget, how that goes. And so, First, you start with the stakeholders, and then if you get a sense of their interest, expectations, and requirements, that will give you the clues on how to set up your project itself. You mentioned earlier building a bridge or sending someone to the moon. Uh, those are, of course, totally different projects than a, a software development project. What makes a software development project then different from the point of project management, from the project management point of view? What makes it different from that point of view than, well, the building a bridge or sending someone to the moon? Well, first of all, I have no personal experience in sending someone to the moon or building a bridge. <laughs> I, only, <laughs> I only do software project management. But I would guess by reading and, and talking to people that are in those industries, um, the it's again an obvious answer, but the difference is software. And if you take, for example, business uh, software as an uh, example, the problem is in the communication that there is. First of all, there is, for example, with requirements to the, to the product, there is a user that has to specify the requirements, what they want. They base that on what they have now on their process, and they try to think about what they actually want in the future. So that's the first build-up. Then they communicate that to 
d a developer directly or at, at least to someone else. And he uh, also puts a mental image on it. So it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And in the end, there is a, a cartoon, a fam very famous cartoon about um, a swing that um, wants to be constructed where the first image is the user that actually describes uh, a normal swing. And in the end, you have just a tree um, with some rope around it that the developer uh, programmed. The main problem is that there is no real good way to avoid this problem in communication around software. And that makes the software project different or difficult to manage. You have to anticipate problems around this, around this pro communication problem. What would you say then is the best approach for gathering all the requirements on my software development project? A lot of feedback would be the, the best uh, approach to gathering all the uh, requirements. A lot of iterations between what the user communicated and what the next person in the communication line thought or interpreted it from that information. So, for example, um, if there is a, a design in between, provide the users with a feedback or a copy of the design. Of course, in a, in a way, they, um, they can understand it. So uh, drawing PERT charts or, or kind of flow charts is not most of the time not the way to communicate that information back because just they simply don't understand or don't have a feeling for how, how this kind of IT-driven modeling works. So you have to provide as much feedback as you can afford time-wise and budget-wise. Of course, a lot of um, prototyping helps in this respect also. So you start very global. You iterate a lot of times with, in this respect, a user or a user rep representative. And to refine the model he has in his head and the developer has in his, in his head. Do I need to gather only the requirements for the product? No. In my definition, like I stated before, like the requirements is just a, a just a set of it's a it's an agreement between uh, the parties involved in the project. The process, the requirements to the process, are also very very important, and a budget, uh, a schedule, but also the the approach that is taken. I mean, uh, I just suggested to uh, use a lot of iterations in it, but. IT management on a very higher level is not always that fond, fond, fond of uh, the use of iterations because it, it looks like, I mean, uh, the, a, a very nice sequential waterfall process has the uh, appearance of being very uh, controllable and very predictive. So everything that's, that, that, is, that is around iterations and doing stuff again and again and again um, has... Uh, an aura of doing the work not correctly around it. So also the approach itself, the strategy itself about the process is a, a requirement to a process. Okay, so I've uh, spoken to my stakeholders, I'm managing my stakeholders, I, I understand what their interests are, I understand what their expectations are. And then I go ahead and I gather the requirements for my product and I also gather the requirements for the process that we're doing on the product on the project here how then do i go uh, about to get feedback from my customer on the work that we're doing actually every time you provide information about an aspect that is one uh, is of their concern you provide feedback and you get feedback it's 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 like you know it's an uh, um, um, cause and effect you give you provide feedback and you get feedback back this is very generic, of course, so how would you, how would you do that? And that's where all uh, project management and, of course, also software development techniques come in. Personally, I don't believe that there is one method to, um, one, not one golden, silver, uh, golden bullet, silver bullet, I think is the, is the term. So you just go around and picking and looking for techniques that are around that is uh, suited for the f kind of feedback you need. So 
if you are talking about the budget, you can just use, uh, I mean, an ordinary uh, uh, budget uh, uh, Excel sheets thing, uh, which you show to the people. They will, uh, they will look at it and they will tell you, well, it's uh, going okay, or you, uh, you, or you are using too much. Um, every time you give feedback to someone, a stakeholder on your project, you get feedback back. So actually, it's like a uh, uh, um, cause and effect. So you provide them with information, and you will get some response back. That can be a formal, um, a formal form, like r a real ev evaluation, or it can just be someone that laughs at the information you get. So you would, uh, you can interpret that as also as a very negative uh, thing. So um, you you are not on the right way. That is, of course, it's very, very generic uh, uh, put. It's very generic put like that. But this is where all the project management and all the software development methods come in. There are so many methods available, and every type and every one has some techniques that can be suited for the feedback you are going to need for a certain uh, for a certain person. If, for example, let's let's go back to the users we just uh, uh, discussed. Prototyping would be a very uh, good technique to provide them with feedback. That's, of course, on the on the product, but also on the process side. If you want to provide feedback on the schedule to uh, to management, you can use the traditional Gantt chart, assuming that they uh, actually know how to read the Gantt chart. But if you uh, if they don't like the Gantt charts, there's there are other kinds of charts available that you can uh, uh, provide the status of your schedule uh, on. So actually, it, it depends on what type of stakeholder there is, uh, what they want to know, now going to back to the interest, and uh, with that information, you can look around and give, uh, find some feedback mechanism. And like I said, feedback mechanisms are all over the place. Every, every information you give to someone is, is a kind of feedback and will generate some feedback. Why is this very important to me? Is that a lot of project managers or a lot of people in general don't look at the techniques in this way. They see it more as a, a, a one-way uh, information providing to, uh, to management, for example, to uh, this is how we far we are on the schedule, and that's it. Or this is how far we are on the... Um, uh, with uh, the, the development of the uh, product. But if you, uh, if you consider it that it's feedback, you know that if you forget the feedback or if you don't provide the feedback correctly, that the people will think, the stakeholders will think that their interests are not met or are at risk. And then we come back again, like interests are the stuff that are the things that people really, really, really want from the project. And then you have uh, a problem because then they will, then they will interact negatively with the project most of the time. You mentioned earlier that you've been doing this software project management business for a few years already. Let, let me take you back uh, all the way to the beginning of your career when you managed your first software development project. What was that like? What was the experience of doing that like for you? And what would you do differently today? Um, that would be a project I did for a newspaper, a Dutch newspaper. I work uh, as a project manager in the publishing industry. I was not a full project manager then. I did uh, uh, the integration part for the external systems. But that was my first management, software development management job. I would, be, I would say that um, there were a lot of people involved in... Um, in that area, you know, external systems, so uh, a lot of vendors. And if I had to go back again, I would put all the people in one room just to close, uh, to have easier uh, communications. There were, it, at, uh, after, if, if I look back at it, there was a possibility to do that. I just only had to uh, ask the question <laughs> to do that. And it would have saved me a lot of communication problems, uh, uncertainties about what uh, person A was doing in respect to um, the work for person B. To sum it all up, what would you say 
are the greatest difficulties that we have in managing software development projects, of course, from a project management point of view, and how do, how do we avoid these? It might not be a surprise that I would say uh, humans are the problem. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> it's, it's actually, um, if, you, if, I, if I look at larger corporations, I would say the greatest, well, it's not pitfall, but um, a problem is corporate politics. If there is a very politic-oriented culture around in a, in a corporation, that is very difficult to handle. It's very difficult to see. So that would be uh, one of the greatest problems, I think, that can affect a software project. How you handle that is more of a, is more of a, a soft skill question. There are many, many different types and approaches to handle that. The, um, another pitfall, another problem I see is that project managers are really f too focused on the process itself and not around how the project is op uh, how the process is operating in its context and how the people are uh, reacting uh, in that area and another pitfall i've seen a lot is a negative attitude towards risks like i said there are a lot of uncertainties around a project you have to handle that and you um, one way to the first part is that to be aware of that there are risks but not everyone is um, able to cope with the fact that there are uncertainties and that there are always will be uncertainties so what I what, you, what I see a lot is that uh, there is a, a very very uh, people want to control the process uh, from start to end so that they know they will be uh, on time and that they know they will be uh, uh, within budget. So if you list risks, risks are problems, problems are not okay, they will go uh, uh, berserk and will not be very relaxed and cool in, uh, in the project surroundings. How do you tackle those problems? Actually, it's just to make people aware of that. Sit down, discuss it. From all the... Uh, the, 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 the types uh, the, uh, from all the pitfalls I just mentioned, there's no, no silver bullet, there's no, no technique that you can say from just do it like that and you will not have the problem. But just to sit down, discuss it openly and communicate about it, most of the time, I would say 90% of the time, you will um, have a better situation at that. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing your experience with us today. Uh, appreciate it very much. And uh, you have not just uh, stopped by with your experience. You have also brought two books. The two books uh, are, uh, let me see if I remember it right, Surprise, Now You're a Software Project Manager. Is that the correct title? That is the correct title. All right. And we are giving away these two books to the listeners. And I'm going to make the official announcement of where they need to write to and by when at the end of the interview. But now, uh, are, are you ready to move on to the final 10 questions? Hit me. <laughs> Hit you. <laughs> right. These are the same 10 questions that I ask everyone at the end of these interviews. So, number one, what was your favorite project? Uh, there will be a project I did some years ago, which was actually very small, with a very small team, and we had a lot of time pressure. It was a very intensive process. Uh, we stayed in hotels and did a lot of tasks in a very short time frame. And the pressure on it and the, the, the very pleasant uh, uh, people that were uh, around that project make that absolutely my favorite project. Number two, what project would you like to have managed? Uh, a very innovative internet site would would be so to be f to be the first I would love to have I mean be the first project manager that created Amazon for example or uh, eBay for that matter number three what is your favorite project management book and of course your own book doesn't count yeah that's too bad um, but I would go for Frederick Brooks with the mythical man month because that is an absolutely fabulous classic and 
he's still uh, on the mark after all those years. Number four, what is the topic of the next seminar that you're planning to attend? Sadly, I don't have uh, any plans in that matter, but I would love to visit a seminar on social simulation that is actually the, uh, a kind of emerging, how do you say, industry or not, no, uh, direction where uh, the behavior of people is simulated in software. I would love to know more about that one. Number five, what is the best way to make a project fail? A lot of corporate politics around it. Number six, how do you like to celebrate a successful project? To have a very good drink with the team. <laughs> Number seven, in your projects, where do you focus most of your attention in order to be successful? Of course, I, I repeat myself, but that would be the people. Uh, go for the gossip or the, um, the coffee machine. You hear the most of the, the information that uh, you really need, but nobody shares a lot at the coffee machine. Number eight, if you weren't a project manager, what would you like to be? Oh, I would love to be a host on a, a travel show on television. You know, visit all the countries, getting paid for it. Number nine, what is the one thing that a project manager cannot live without? A sense of humor. <laughs> and finally, number ten, the oldest question in project management. What is more important in a project manager? Project management expertise or industry expertise? I cannot answer that question. I, I, I try to answer that question, but I, I cannot come up with the final answer because it depends on the characteristic of a person. If a person has a... Um, the right social skills, then project management itself can be eas easily picked up and I would absolutely go for industry expertise, which then brings a lot more. However, if you have an industry expert that has no social skills, whatever, it's, it will be useless as a project manager. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time um, being on the program with us today. And of course, also thank you very much for offering two free books to our listeners. Appreciate it. Well, thank you uh, back and thank you for your time. All right, and that was the interview with Bas de Bar on the project management methodology for software development projects that he describes in his book. Surprise, now you're a software project manager. And Bas has been kind enough to offer two books, two copies of his book, as a giveaway here on the show. Now, if you would like to win one of those two copies of Surprise, now you're a software project manager. What you'll have to do is send an email to pmpodcast at gmail.com. In the subject of the email, right? Surprise! And in the body of the email, just tell me the town and the country where you are writing from. And your email has to get to me by the 25th of October. Well, we don't have an episode going out on the 21st, so we're going to, this is going to take three weeks until we hear who's won. So it has to get to me by the 25th of October. But as we all know, we are procrastinators. So if you're sitting at a computer right now, open up that email client of yours and send an email. Let me remind you, of course, that you can find a link to all the books that our interview guests have recommended in the helpful resources section of every single episode and also in the category books on the helpful resources section. Tune in again next week when we will speak with Mr. Earned Value himself. Yes, I spoke with Mr. Quentin Fleming on what he calls simple earned value. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Don't go yet, don't go yet. There's something else I have for you. Hi, I'm Jerry Manis, the author of Napoleon on Project Management and co-founder of PM Think. I'd like to tell you about a seminar we have coming up called the Leadership Quadrant, Four P's for Organizational Excellence. When I say we, I'm partnering with Jerome Jewell. He's from Jewell Consulting Group and has consulted all sorts of organizations, including NASA, the United Nations, and some pretty uh, high-profile groups. But the seminar, the four P's for Organizational Excellence are principles, 
people, productivity, and process. The seminar is November 15th and 16th at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia. We want to really keep this hands-on and interactive, so I'll have all sorts of fun exercises. We're going to talk about topics such as service-oriented project management, emotional intelligence, systemic thinking. We'll, of course, explore the in-depth six winning principles from the Napoleon book, innovation and talent management, constructive conflict. We'll talk about asking better questions and setting better priorities. And it should be a very interesting seminar. Also, we're going to incorporate Freedom Rising, which is an award-winning multimedia presentation at the Constitution Center. And we'll actually be incorporating that into the workshop. Now, with this seminar, we're going to be including not only the training materials and Continental Breakfast, of course, but your personal signed copy of Napoleon on Project Management, a signed copy of Solving Performance Problems by Bud Bilinich, who's also known as the Common Sense Guy, and it's, it's a wonderful book. Free admission to the Constitution Center, and of course, a group viewing of Freedom Rising. Demo copy of Mind Manager, which is an excellent piece of software that I use frequently, and not only in project management, but actually in crafting the book. And also a chance to win a full version of Mind Manager. At least one person will win a full version of Mind Manager, which sells for $349 usually. So I think you'll find it very interesting and Informative and, and fun. And if you want to find out more about it, visit my website at www.manasbooks.com and go to the Marengo Group tab and you'll find out all about it. And for members of this podcast, I'd also like to offer a $100 discount. So please mention where you heard it when you fill out the registration form. I hope to see you there. All right. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. As always, you can find us on the web at thepmpodcast.com or send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. And when you write, please tell me where in the world you are writing from. And of course, when you stop by at thepmpodcast.com, please don't forget to click on the link labeled PM Templates to increase your productivity. It's in the left-hand side on the PM Help You will find best practice templates that will benefit your project. And finally, we have this. If you are six months late on a milestone that is due next week, but you really, really believe that you can still make it, then you're a project manager. Until next time.